Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20. Good morning, boys and girls. You're all welcome to Sunday school this morning. I'm sure you're very excited because the lesson for today is that of joy. It brings joy to the whole world. Our lesson title is An Empty Tomb. That alone gives you hope. You remember what happened last week? They put Jesus inside that tomb. But this week, we are going to learn how he woke up and came out of the tomb. Are you ready? Yeah! I know you are. For our reading, we are reading Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 11. But I'll just read verse 3 to 6. Read with me. Open your Bibles. Mark chapter 16, verse 3. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. 5. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. Affrighted. 6. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. I told you. I think we are all going to start smiling now because our lesson today is that of joy. Can you see? That is the picture of the empty tomb. You remember last week? Yes? Oh, Ruth, why are you sad? I'm thinking about this cross, how Jesus died. Oh. I see. So this reminded you of Jesus' death. Yes, he died. That's what we learned last week. Even this one as well. I'm sure it must have reminded you. Oh, they nailed him. But you know what? You don't need to be sad. I know. Just like what um, uh, you saw that girl who was so sad when we started. Because she was still thinking of what happened last week. Because what really happened last week wasn't very nice, was it? No. They took Jesus, they nailed him on the cross, blood was coming out of him, they nailed him with those big nails, those big hammers, they put that crown of thorns around his head, and he was bleeding and he died, and they put him in that tomb. But guess what? He woke up from that tomb after three days. So from where we read, women, some three women, they woke, up, they woke up in the morning, very, very early in the morning. They wanted to go and put some spices on his body. It was their way of doing things. It was their tradition that when someone dies, you have to... Uh, you know the way you use cream to put on your body? That's the way they were going to use some special spices. Can you see? Some special, very special spices. They were supposed to rub it all around his body. But you know what? They were even thinking, how are we going to open the tomb? Remember, they put that big stone. So they were worried, who is going to open for us? But you know what? As they got closer, it was open. The stone had been rolled away. And they just got inside. But wow, it was empty. It was empty. Jesus was not there. He woke up from there. After three days, Friday, he was there. The whole of Saturday, he was there. Sunday morning, he woke up. Do you remember? He had told his disciples before. He told 
them. He told them that, yes, I'm going to die. But after three days, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to wake up from that from 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 that tomb. I'm going to wake up and he really woke up. That's why I told you today is a day of joy. Is a day of joy because Jesus did not remain dead. If he had remained dead, oh, even ourselves, our future was going to be very scary. Maybe all of us will just perish. But the reason he woke up is to give all of us a future hope that we too, we are going to wake up. If we die before he comes back, I know you still remember, you still remember that he said he's coming back. But if we die before he comes back, we too, we are going to wake up from any grave. It doesn't matter where we'll be buried. It doesn't matter where our bodies would be. We are going to wake up from those graves as well. And we will live with Jesus forever and ever and ever. I'm sure you all love that. Yes, especially hmm, this waking up is not just for everybody, you know. Is for those little boys and little girls who have told Jesus about their sins to say, I know I do some naughty things. I did this bad thing and I did this other bad thing. Jesus, forgive me. Those who have asked Jesus to forgive their sins, they will wake up if they go in any grave. They will wake up. And they will live with Jesus forever and ever. I know all of you, you want to live with Jesus forever and ever. Yes, I want to live with Jesus forever and ever. So I have to be very careful what I do. I have to be very careful what I think about, how I play with my friends, how I do my things, because Jesus is watching us. We need to be good girls and good boys so that we can live with Jesus forever and ever. So all of us, that's why, you know, to be a child of God, it's a, it's a happy thing. We are happy because we know nothing can put us down. Even death cannot put us down. Because as, for as long as your name is in the book of life, if you die, you, you are going to wake up. And you are going to be with Jesus forever and ever. This happens to the children. It happens to adults. Anybody whose sins are forgiven, they will also rise from the dead. We shall rise. I'm sure you have heard the choir singing that song. We shall rise. We shall rise. All of us, if our hearts are clean, get that? If our hearts are clean, we are looking forward to that day of rising up and we'll be with the Lord forever and ever in a happy place. A happy place. So Jesus woke up so that he could go to heaven and finish the, the plan that we too can come and be with him. You remember? He said, I will go and prepare a place for you. So if he didn't woke up, oh, I don't know how that was going to happen, but we are happy that he woke up and is preparing those mansions, that beautiful place for you and for me so that we can live with him forever and ever. Do you want to be with Jesus forever and ever? Yes, tell Jesus your sins, tell him and he will clean you and you will reign with him. For our activity is displayed, find the way. So use a pencil or, or a pen to see how you can get inside the tomb. I'm sure you'll find that it's empty. God bless you. And for our next week's lesson, is this displayed? Thank you. Have a wonderful week and God bless you. Bye. Good morning, children. Happy Sunday to you all. You are all welcome to answer class today. Children, I want to show you some ingredients. 
we have flour here let me show it to you you can see it we have sugar and we have some eggs here in the bowl we have butter we have milk and we have a um, baking soda here we're going to make a cake we're going to bake a cake those are the main ingredients in baking cake but if you decided to use all these ingredients you're going to have a yummy cake now if your mom has taught you how to make cake with these main ingredients and your teacher and you decided no i'm not gonna do use sugar i don't want sugar i'm going to take sugar away from the ingredients i'm going to use salt i want to put salt in my ingredient to bake the cake how does that look the taste is going to be very very bad it's going to be very very bad you won't be able to eat it because you have removed the main ingredients in baking the cake because you have used your own idea and your will you refuse to follow the instruction of your mom or your teacher and that brings us to the title of our lesson today which says not my will let's say it together children not my will the memory verse for today's lesson is says teach me to do thy will for thou art my God. Psalm 143, verse 10. We have some selected verses to read. Children, take your Bible. We're going to read from St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 40, verse 36 to 42. And then Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. We are going to read Matthew chapter 26. We start from verse 36. Children, open your Bible and read along with me. 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethseman, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. 40. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and said unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me? 1 hour. 41. Watch and pray, that ye enter not unto temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 42. He went away again in the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, that will be done. From the Bible passage you read, we can see Jesus Christ went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray with the disciples. He went with 11 disciples. If you can see this little uh, playlet, then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and began to be soulful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful. Tell ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time 
and prayed, saying, My father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. My father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man trade unto the hands of sinners. We can see there how Jesus Christ went to the garden to pray. And the three, and he went with eleven, but he took three of them to follow him to pray. And he asked them to wait there while he went yonder to pray. And when he came back, they were sleeping. Before then, Jesus Christ knew he was coming to this earth to die for mankind. He has told him, some people will love you, some people will hate you. And those that hated Jesus Christ, they planned to kill him. He knew that was when he went to that garden of Gethsemane to pray. To pray very well. But it is the will of God, he has to surrender. They came, they caught him, they took him to the governor, and he said he has committed a sin. Why is he saying he's the son of God? He's comparing himself to God. And they nailed him to the cross and crucified him. And, and when he died, they took him and they buried him in the tomb. But that day, what happened? The whole place was shaking. And the soldier that were kept to guide the tomb, they saw that the, the Jesus Christ was no more there. The angel were there. And the stone has been rolled to cover that place. And what happened? Jesus Christ has risen. Before he died for our sin, God has called him and said, it is time for you to go to the earth and die for my sin. Children, with what we have learned now, how Jesus Christ submit himself, how he prayed, and he said submit himself, do the will of God, we also have to submit and yield to the will of God. The will of God is to confess our sins, forsake it, and don't go back to the sins again, as Christ has submit himself to the cross and die for our sins. So we also have to submit ourselves to the will of God and fulfill God's plan for our life and get saved and be good children. Then Let's answer some questions in order to understand the lesson more better. Question 1. What condition would the world have been left? In, if Jesus had called for more than 12 legions of angels to come and deliver him, how was his submission an example to us? The world would have been left without hope. There won't be no salvation. And how was his submission an example to us is that Jesus Christ submitted himself on the cross. He submitted to the will of God. So also we need to submit ourselves. To the will of God. Question number two. We have many biblical examples of those who were willing to submit to God's plan for their lives. Tell about one and what might have happened if he or she had refused to obey God. Example, we know them like Noah, Esther. If Noah refused to listen to God, did not build the ark, the whole world would have perished. And if Esther did not pray, his people would have, her people would have perished and they would have hanged them. Question number three. What are some of the ways we can ascertain whether a certain course of action is in the will of God for us? 
if we pray and we read our Bible and we seek the guidance of the Word of God, we know that this thing is the will of God. For example, children, if your friend in the class says, let's go and steal rubber from your friend, will you do that? No. But if he says, let's read our Bible or let's read our book or do your literacy and numeracy, you will do that. So if your friend is telling you to go out to do something wrong, you know what is wrong, what is right. Like all the lessons we have been learning, our hearts will tell us the right thing. And this brings to the statement of our lesson, which is, I will do God's will. Children, let's say it. I will do God's will to obey God's word and be saved. The activities for this lesson is as display. The list below contains decisions that need careful consideration. Who makes the decisions in these areas of your life? Put a check mark in the box that answers that question. Do you think your answer to each of these is God's will? Next week lesson is lesson 86, a great change, a great change. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for answer lesson. We thank you for primary lesson. We thank you, God, that you have helped us to listen, to submit to your will. God, help us, oh Lord, to pray today for salvation. Pray for the primary, pray for the answer, pray for the adults, so that at the end of everything, oh Lord, we want to be saved and to be good children. Help us, oh Lord, and we praise you forever. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, children. Bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.